The Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, has suffered from over 15 years of internal conflict and fighting along its borders, with foreign militias and armies often carrying on their struggles within the country. An estimated 5 million lives have been lost. Although a peace deal was agreed in 2003, the east of the country where Virunga is located is still the center of ongoing and often brutal conflict between several armed groups and forces loyal to the government. The park was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979, but Chief Warden Emmanuel Demerode and his team are still fighting a constant battle for its survival. What's your history? What first brought you into this type of work? Well, I was born, I grew up in Kenya. When I came here, I was only expecting to stay here for six months. In the end, I stayed for 20 years. Wow. Um, but the, the main reason was the people. You know, I felt very welcome here. To be responsible for a park like Virunga when your, your life is wildlife conservation, it's the best job in the world. The park's made up of three sectors, and each one is absolutely unique. There's the northern sector, which has the Ruinsori Mountains, which go up to 5,000 meters. And it has glaciers on top, alpine forest, moorland, and then goes down into the great lowland tropical rainforest. Then you go down the Semliki Valley, Lake Edward, and then the great savannas of Ruindi in the central sector, which used to have the highest large mammal concentrations on Earth. From the great central savannas, we move into the mountains again, but this time it's the volcanoes. And there we've got, for instance, Nyahagonga volcano, which is the largest lava lake on Earth. It's a, an active volcano. But of course, it's the mountain gorillas that are what make the southern sector so special. Certainly, this park used to be, without a question of doubt, one of the greatest parks in the world. You know, the, the real sad sadness is is that, you know, there's been war for 20 years. When there's war on this scale, everything suffers. The elephant populations, the hippo populations, it was the biggest hippopotamus population in the world. 20% of all the world's hippos were in Virunga. They were decimated from 27,000 down to um, 350 individuals. Because there's conflict, there's the widespread distribution of weapons mm. um, and considerable demand for, you know, ivory in the case of elephants, you know, baby gorillas. And those demands come from far, far away. It all amounts to a very, very dangerous situation. We have uh, about 280 rangers at the moment. Since the war started in 2006, 130 of our staff have been killed protecting the park. Burying the men that, um, that are under your command is very, very hard because they were following your orders when they were killed. When they've lost one of their friends and colleagues and the very next day they're back in the same places where their friends fell and they continue their work. So they are quite exceptional, remarkable people. Part of that team are the rangers that raise and protect orphaned baby gorillas in a purpose-built sanctuary, part funded by the European Union. So this is the Sinkwekwe Center, which was named after the silverback who was killed in 2007, along with four other members of his family. Basically, people had gone in and had, at point blank, shot these gorillas. We were able to recover two orphans. Both of them were recovered from their families. In the case of Ndakazi, she was the first to be recovered on the body of her mother. Several other orphans have been rescued too. And together with their human carers, these young gorillas have formed a new family. They remain a, a critically endangered species and also a big part of this country's future. And so even a few individuals are terribly important. Ça va, André? Oui, ça va. OK. So this is André, who's um, the team leader for um, the carers, for the yeah. gorillas here, and has been looking after right from the day when they were recovered sick. Five years ago. Yeah, and they very nearly died. 
To meet the gorillas, I have to take some stringent hygiene precautions. Because we share 98% of our DNA, we also suffer from many of the same diseases. Okay, so I have to wear a mask and disinfect my feet. Oui. Comme ça. Oui. Et je mets ça sur les oreilles. Les oreilles, ok. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great look, huh? <laughs> I also need to stay this side of the bars. Because the gorillas are so strong, they could easily hurt me without meaning to. C'est incroyable, je suis jamais été si tellement proche avec un gorille. Ce sont les, les quatre gorilles que vous voyez ici. Eh, ce sont les gorilles de montagne que vous pouvez eh, trouver en captivité au monde entier. Oh, il n'y a rien, Maïcha. <coughs> Celle-ci, c'est Maïcha. Maïcha. Et celle-ci, c'est Sendeze. Sendeze. Oui. On avait trouvé Ndakas, non, Ndeze, après la mort de, de sa famille. Et lui, c'est qui, lui? Euh, celle-ci, c'est Kaboko. Là, si vous trouvez que ça, elle n'a pas, il n'a pas de main, c'est à cause des braconniers. Ils ont l'ont attrapé à, dans un piège. Et pour sauver l'animal, il fallait absolument couper la main. Est-ce que tu as ce sentiment qu'ils sont tes enfants? Oui, ce sont nos enfants. Lorsqu'on on parvient à sauver la vie de ce gorille, vraiment, on se sait qu'on a fait un, un travail vraiment très significatif pour notre pays.